As I said, a very interesting conversation. In fact, this conversation is found in the three Gospels, Matthew, Mark, and Luke. Today we heard from Mark. In Matthew's Gospel, the questioner is either a scribe or a Pharisee. We're not told exactly. But he's approaching Jesus to trap him. It says one question, Jesus, trying to trap him. Well, what would that trap be? Well, remember the question. What's the first, the greatest, the most important of all the commandments? Now, in Jesus' day, there were, of course, the Ten Commandments given to God, by God, to Moses on Mount Sinai. And there were also 613 other laws in the Jewish books. So the trap would be this. Whatever answer Jesus would say, I could come back and say, so the rest aren't that important? For example, if Jesus would have answered, taking one of the Ten Commandments, thou shalt not kill. That's the most important commandment. This very clever scribe would come back and say, so then you're saying adultery isn't that bad? Stealing's okay? Lying isn't too bad? Well, Jesus knew their trickiness. When Matthew finishes Jesus' answer, he moves on to another subject. In Luke's gospel, the questioner also is trying to trap Jesus, according to Luke's account. But then at the end, when Jesus has given his answer, I don't know if this questioner is serious or still sarcastic. And so he asked Jesus, when he heard Jesus say, love your neighbor as yourself, he said, okay, who is my neighbor? And that's where Jesus tells the beautiful parable of the good Samaritan. That's our neighbor. But back to Mark's gospel, the one we just listened to. Again, we think this scribe, according to Mark, is serious. Remember, 613 laws in the Jewish books, 10 commandments. What's the most important? And Jesus answered with the prayer that the Jewish people call the Shema, S-H-E-M-A. That's the English letters for the Hebrew alphabet, Hebrew word, Shema. Shema means listen. Now, when this was in the Bible, the book of Deuteronomy, it wasn't Moses saying, listen to me, Moses. Moses is saying, this is what God is asking you Jewish people. Listen to God. Listen to Yahweh. And I think that's good advice for all of us. Do we listen well? Do we listen well? Well, of course, you might say every Sunday I go to Mass and there's three readings in the Bible, and I listen to them. Good. What about the rest of the week? Do your prayers include listening time? Most of our prayers I would call talking prayers. And that's okay. Jesus said, Seek, and you'll find. Knock, and the door will be opened. Ask, and you'll receive. So Jesus wants us to talk to him. But in the Shema, we're asked by God, listen. So let's say you take 20 minutes a day for prayer. That may be too much for some of you who are very, very busy. But let's just start with 20 minutes. If you set aside 20 minutes for prayer, 10 minutes, talk to God. Get all your talking out. Then why not have 10 minutes of quiet? 10 minutes of silence, just listening to God. You may not hear him in your ears like you're hearing me right now, but I guarantee you'll hear him in your heart. So that's the first part of the Shema. Listen, O Israel. And then he continues, the Lord our God is Lord alone. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, with all your strength. He could have stopped there, but he goes on to a second. I'll get to that in a moment. So that's called the Shema. The Shema is the most important prayer for the Jewish person. Have you ever seen an Orthodox Jewish man with a little black box on his head? You know, string around there, a little black box? Inside that box is a scroll, and the scroll reads the Shema. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is Lord alone. Or sometimes they wear a little box on their wrist. Again, a little box with a scroll inside it, with the Shema. Or a mezuzah. You know what a mezuzah is? It's that... Uh, that holy article that's on the doorpost of Jewish homes. And if you're with a Jewish friend or family, when they walk into their home and they touch it, when they walk out of their home and they touch it, inside that little mezuzah is a scroll. Written on the scroll in Hebrew is the Shema, their most important prayer. Now, did you ever wonder why the mezuzah is angled on the doorpost? Well, the story is that there were two rabbis arguing how it should be hung on the doorpost. One rabbi said it should be vertical to show that we are connected to God. God is above us, we are below a vertical line. The second rabbi said, no, it should be horizontal to show that we are one Jewish community, all equal in God's eyes. So finally, a third rabbi had to be called in to settle the dispute, and he said, let's make it an angle 
and then everybody's happy. <laughs> Jewish people are so very practical, so very practical. There's other aspects of this Shema that the Jewish people use. They use it as a morning prayer and a nighttime prayer. The first thing they do in the morning, hear all Israel. The Lord our God is Lord alone. And the last thing they say before they go to bed, hear all Israel. I'm sure many of them pray it in Hebrew. That's where we get our idea of morning and night prayers from the Liturgy of the Hours. The Liturgy of the Hours is the official prayer of the church. Priests have to say it, those in religious life, sisters and brothers. But it's also open to lay people. I'm thinking perhaps of having morning prayer once in a while before our Mass every day at 7.30. So morning prayer, evening prayer, well, maybe you don't know what the Liturgy of the Hours are, or you want something maybe a little bit easier. I've told you many times what I do. The first thing I get up in the morning, you know, is this morning, as soon as I put my first foot on the floor, I make the sign of the cross. Why? Someone suggested that in a retreat I was at one time. I've done it for years and years now. Like morning prayer, like the Shema. Now, I have to be honest, I don't often do night prayers. You see, I don't go to bed because the clock tells me I should go to bed. It's 10 o'clock, you should go to bed. Who says? I go to bed when I'm tired. It might be 10 o'clock some night, it might be 2 in the morning some days. But when I go to bed, I toss and turn for about 3 seconds, and then I'm just dead to the world. So I wake up. So I forget about night prayer. But I was looking at the readings today, and someone suggested that just as the Jewish people do the Shema before night prayer, why not the sign of the cross? As you're laying in bed, head on the pillow, before you doze off, just the sign of the cross. Now, some of us were taught other morning and night prayers as well. I was taught the morning offering when I went to St. Joseph's School here in town in Gorman. And uh, I forget it now. It was, oh my God, I offer you this day all my prayers and so on. Most of us were taught a night prayer. Let's see if you still remember. Now I lay me down to sleep. I pray the Lord my soul to keep. If I should die before I wake, I pray the Lord my soul to take. Give yourself some applause. All right. So that's good. So that's the challenge from the Shema. So wasn't that nice? Jesus quoted the Bible to give that man a good answer. But it's a challenge to us who are Christians as well. Maybe we don't know the Shema. It's not as important to us as other prayers. But to begin and end our day with prayer. And we hear Jesus say, and we hear the apostles and some of the writers say, pray always. In other words, to make God the center of your life, to love God with all your being, heart, mind, soul, and strength, means to put God first in your life. Now, I don't mean that you have to be on your knees 24-7. You know, we're busy people. We sleep roughly eight hours a day. We work, we eat, etc. But you can turn different moments into your day into a prayer. You like to go to a nice restaurant for dining. Good. Some people say a prayer before meals in a restaurant. Other people are too embarrassed or too shy. But where did that good food come from? It came from a farm. Where did that farm come from? It came from God. You love people in your life. You love your spouse, your children, your parents, your best friend. Where did that person come from? A child of God. So almost everything can be turned around to be godly in some way. That's keeping God focused all your life. One time I was teaching a class and I was talking about this, how to bring prayer into every aspect of your life. And this woman raised her hand and says, you know, when I'm in a, a um, you know, one of these um, strip, or what do you call them, strip markets, strip uh, malls, you know, whatever they're called. And there's a huge parking place in front of Smith's or whatever. This is my prayer. Hail Mary, full of grace, help me find a parking place. <laughs> so you can have that now, it's yours. You know? <laughs> See if it works. So simple ways to bring God into our daily lives. Now Jesus could have stopped there, because that's all the man asked for, give me the greatest commandment. But Jesus couldn't. He had to say, the second is like it. He didn't ask, the man didn't ask for two, he asked for one. But Jesus could not separate love of God and love of neighbor. He said the two are inseparable. They belong together. How important that is. They're like two sides of a coin. You know, heads and tails, that were, they're so important they belong to get together. How can you say you love God if you don't love your neighbor? In fact, in one of John's letters, the first letter that John the Apostle wrote in the Bible, he says, if you say you love God whom you cannot see and don't love your neighbor whom you do see, you're a liar. A liar is a strong word. I don't know what it's like to be called a liar. So the real challenge is yes, to put God in our life and then to love our neighbor. Why? 
Don't we love God? Shouldn't we love all that God made? God made this beautiful world, and especially this time of year in the desert, the beautiful day we have today, the wonderful sunrise and sunsets that we see in the mountains, full moon a few days ago, the oceans, the forests, the mountains, the desert, beautiful things that God created. We should be grateful and thankful for that. Well, God created every single person here in the church this afternoon, every single person on the planet Earth, and we're asked to love our neighbor. Even at times when that person isn't lovable, to take the high road, to go high, and to try to find the good in that person, whatever it is. So that's the challenge from the gospel today, not just listening to a conversation Jesus had. And apparently the man in today's gospel had a conversion experience. If he really was trying to trap Jesus, he changed his mind. Because then he said, you're right, Jesus, that answer is perfect. To love God, to love your neighbor is worth more than burnt goats or calves or whatever they used to offer as animal sacrifice in the temple. That's the most important thing. And Jesus came back and said, young man, you're not far from the kingdom of God. You listen, and you're doing well. So that's our challenge. Love God, love your neighbor. A great examination of conscience. You know, sometimes people examine their conscience on the Ten Commandments, but these two laws cover the Ten Commandments. Love God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength covers the first three. I am the Lord your God, no strange gods before me. Do not take God's name in vain. Honor God on the Lord's day. And the next one, love your neighbor yourself. The next seven are covered there. Honor your parents and lawful authority. Don't kill, don't commit adultery, don't steal, don't lie, don't have jealous covetousness against others. They're all there. So at the end of the day, you could examine your conscience. Were all my words and actions today God-loving? Did I love my neighbor throughout the day? And most days, most of us can say, not quite. I wasn't as good as I could be. But some days you can say, I did pretty good. When you have days like that, listen. And God might say to you exactly what he said to the man in the gospel today. And you, 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 you're not far from the kingdom of God. Keep up the good work.